Good evening and welcome to Main Street Baptist Church, our Wednesday night midweek service. We're so glad that you're here to join us tonight. As always, every Wednesday night we gather to open God's Word and spend time in, in the Bible. Tonight we'll be in Philippians chapter 4. And then following that we have our focus on ministry. And tonight we're focusing on women's ministry. And our women's ministry coordinator, Melissa Denton, is with us. And she'll be coming to share with you what's going on, some exciting things that are happening, uh, some new things that are going on, and we'll be talking about women's ministry tonight. And then, of course, following that at the end of our time tonight, we'll be gathering uh, to pray for the uh, prayer requests that have been sent into our church. If you have a prayer request that you would like us to remember, please send that now uh, to Mark, M-A-R-K, Mark at msbchurch.com. And our youth pastor, Mark uh, Rich, will gather those together and add those to what we've already collected, and we'll be praying for those requests tonight. Uh, also, if you have any questions concerning women's ministry, you can also send those questions to mark at msbchurch.com, and we'll try to field all those questions tonight. And if you have a generic question, as long as it's not about computers, I know I can't answer that, but I could probably re rely on my good friend John there in the back, and uh, he could take care of that for us. But uh, if you have a question about the church in general, uh, don't feel uh, or, or like you can't ask uh, that because it's not women's ministry. Anything you want to talk about, uh, we'll try to get to it if we have time. Tonight, let's open our Bibles to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians 4, and we're going to read just the first four verses of Philippians chapter 4. We won't cover the whole chapter uh, because in the time uh, that we have allotted, there's just not time to really do that. But we're going to uh, kind of take a little different approach tonight. Uh, we're going to kind of, well, we're going to look at four, four chapters and four things we need to get out of these uh, four verses. Stand with me, if you would, out of respect for God's Word, as we read Philippians chapter 4, beginning in verse 1. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for by joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Euodius and beseech Syntyche that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, Help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. Sometimes when I go shopping, my wife will text me a shopping list. And she'll say, you know, we need to get, you know, a pineapple. We need to get bread. We need to get milk. We need butter. We need to get uh, this, that, or the other. And so uh, we need to get some things. And, and usually I, I come back home with all the things on my list because I had a list to go by. Well, there's a list of things here in Philippians chapter 4 that I think we need to get. Now, I don't think you're going to get them at HEB or Walmart or any grocery store, but you can get these things from God. You can get these things through His Word by His Holy Spirit. And I just kind of want to maybe lighten up the message a little bit tonight by looking at it as a, as a shopping list, if you will, of things we need to get. And I'm going to give you these four things right up front, and then we're going to talk about them. We need to get up on our feet. We need to get along with each other. We need to get to work in the gospel ministry, and we need to get happy in the Lord. Now, first of all, verse number one, he says, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved my, and longed for my joy and crown. Paul's saying here, You're dear to me. I love you. You're my dearly beloved family, my brethren, uh, my joy and my crown. You mean so much to me. He says, I want you to do this. Stand fast in the Lord. Uh, we need to get up. Get up and stand for the Lord and to stand fast. That word stand fast, that phrase has to do with being stationary, being firm, uh, established, fixed. Listen, I'm afraid that our churches today in the 21st century are just simply afraid to stand. Afraid to take a stand for truth. Afraid to stand for right. 
afraid that someone won't like them, afraid that someone might get offended if you happen to say something that they don't like. Paul says here, stand fast uh, in the Lord. Um, We're so afraid that someone's feelings are going to get hurt. We're so afraid that uh, if I say something is right or something is wrong, that Uh, someone will be offended by it. Paul wrote to the Corinthians in in 1 Corinthians 16 saying, watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. In Galatians 5, 1, he says, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Listen, God's grace leads us to stand, not to fall, not to lay down, not to be lazy, but to stand. Paul wrote to the Ephesians telling them that there was a spiritual battle and that they were to stand against the wiles of the devil and to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. He says, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Paul is describing here a first century foot soldier, and he's using that armor to talk to Christians and say, you are in a battle. You're in a spiritual battle. You need to take a stand in that battle. Don't be uh, complacent. Don't be um, lukewarm, but to be uh, ready to go to fight. He says that Timothy says, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Paul uses that word stand fast in chapter 1 of Philippians where he tells us to stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Listen, we are so afraid that someone's Uh, feelings are going to be hurt that the church today will not preach about sin. They won't claim or name anything to be wrong. We become so accepting of the culture around us that nothing's wrong anymore. Listen, Isaiah, uh, the Lord said to Isaiah, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Listen, we need men and women of faith who will stand up and say, that's wrong. Jesus did that. John the Baptist did that. Paul did that. Isaiah did that. Where are the prophets today who will say, thus saith the Lord, that your lifestyle is wicked. Your sins are against God. Repent. Listen, the gospel is that Christ died for our, what is it, Mark? What did Christ die for? Our sins. Well, listen, if if there are no sins, if we're afraid to say that something is sin, if we're afraid to say that someone's a sinner, listen, there's no gospel. Christ died, why? Because I'm a sinner. I'm a condemned uh, sinner under the wrath of God, and Jesus was sent to save me from my sins. And so we need to get up and take a stand and say, no, that's wrong. Let me, let me say some things. Uh, racism is wrong. You need to stand against it. Don't lay down on the job. Listen, brutality is wrong. Oppression is wrong. The church needs to take a stand. Let me say something else. Looting is wrong. Rioting is wrong. Taking things that don't belong to you is wrong. Defunding law enforcement is not a good move. Listen, you know, in my home growing up, my dad was the law, and there was no defunding the law. (laughs) You know, it's just not going to happen. Listen, the Bible instructs us to be obedient and to serve. And listen, under uh, under dire circumstances, dare we defy the authority that's above us. And yet we're living in a day where that seems to be so commonplace. And the church needs to stand up and say, uh, I back the law. That's wrong. Listen, racism's wrong. Police brutality is wrong. 
defying the uh, law enforcement is wrong. Uh, arson is wrong. We had a group of folks here recently burn down a Wendy's. That's sin. That's wickedness. And we need to voice that. And to, to, to lighten up on that is to take a wrong position. Listen, taking away someone's liberties is wrong. Killing a child in his mother's womb is wrong. Destruction of property is wrong. Stand. Stand against it. Not only do we need to get up and stand fast, but we need to get along. Now, there were a couple of ladies here in this church that Paul wrote to at Philippi, and they just weren't getting along together. Pastor, you've never seen that happen in any church you've ever been in, have you? That just doesn't happen. We're, we're going to talk about women's ministry tonight. Melissa, you've never seen two women get sideways with each other, I'm sure. We just don't live that way, right? He says here, I beseech Euodius and I beseech Syntyche that they be of the same mind in the Lord. Listen, uh, to be of the same mind, to be like-minded is to think alike and get along. There were two ladies in this church that were causing problems because they wouldn't, I didn't say couldn't, they wouldn't get along. And I find that to be true most times. It's not a matter of I can't do it, it's I won't do it. And uh, we not only need to get up, but we need to get along. He says here, they wouldn't get along with each other. Listen, when you fight with one another as fellow Christians, you hinder the work of Jesus Christ. Stop it. Real simple, stop it. Don't do it. If you're fighting with someone in church, stop it. If you are uh, sideways with somebody, get right. Get right with God, get right with that person, and get over it. Say, how do I do that? Humble yourself. It takes humility. You know, it takes humility to say, I was wrong. It takes humility to say, I'm sorry. It takes humility. Get over it. Your fighting hinders the work of Christ. The gospel is far too important. Listen to me. The gospel is far too important for me to waste my time fighting with you. It is too important for us to have petty disagreements. Now listen, we're not talking about having a disagreement over the virgin birth. We're not talking about having a disagreement over foundational truths in the Word of God. No, no, no. That never happens. It's always something that is secondary or tertiary or even further down the road than that. So listen, get over it. Get over yourself and move on. Go to, uh, uh, to, to work. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Go to work. But the gospel is far and too important to be fighting over lesser things. Verse 3, he says, I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women. So he says, not only get up, get along, but get to work. What's the work here? Help. He said, these ladies need help. Help them get along. Help them in the ministry. Listen, they, they weren't bad women. They weren't bad people. He says, they labored with me in the gospel. These women knew Christ, loved Christ, worked with the apostle Paul, but they were fighting with one another. Paul says, stop it. And he, and he says, help them to uh, labor in the gospel. Listen, not only do we need to get up and get along, but we need to get to work. Listen, um, quit fighting and start helping. Those in the, in the church, every one of us have a ministry. He says to help those who are laboring in the gospel. Um, that little word help is a big word. Do you ever need help, Ernest? Is there times when you could use somebody to say, hey, can you do this? Could you help me with this? Listen, you don't have to pastor the church. You don't have to teach a Sunday school class. Listen, you don't have to go to Africa as a missionary. But every last one of us can help. You know, that's a gift, the gift of helps. Help. Help. I didn't the Beatles sing about that. I think they did. Uh, maybe we can get Alan to sing that. I Probably not. <laughs> but he says help. Uh, the word labored there is sunathleo. It's compound word meaning to wrestle or to fight together. It's a team. We got our, word, our modern word athlete from that. So we're talking here about a team. And folks, let me tell you something. The church is a team. Now listen, we're, we're, when you are on a team, you work together. 
You don't work against one another. You have an opponent that you go against. But your teammates are not your opponents. And he says here, labor together, strive together. Team, someone said to me years ago, that means together everyone achieves more. Listen, you know what we need? If you're watching tonight, we need you. We need you to be a part of this team. Don't sit on the sidelines and watch. Don't sit up in the stands and watch. Get in the game. You know, when I was in junior high, uh, I was a little small guy. That's hard to believe, isn't it? I was, I was kind of a runt. I didn't grow till I got to high school. And, and so in football, I sat on the sideline a lot uh, in, in seventh and eighth grade. Well, I got tired of it. You know, I said, I want to play. So I just got up and put myself in the game once. <laughs> just ran out on the field. The coach says, where's he going? And the kid sitting next to me, because I told him what I was going to do, he said, he's going in the game, coach. And I just went in, tapped on the guy on the floor, and I said, hey, I'm in for you. And uh, he said, why? Because I wanted to be part of what was going on. Listen, you need to get in the game. Run on the field. Get a spot. Now, don't come tap Pastor Ernest on the shoulder and say, I got Sunday for you. you know? <laughs> but get involved. Be part of the team. Um, let me ask you something. Every member has a place, a purpose, and a job. What are you doing? The last I looked, pew sitting or chair sitting now is not a spiritual gift. Now, I sit in pews. I sit in chairs. I come. I'm here as often as I can be. And, and maybe your pew or your chair right now is your couch at home watching live stream, and that's fine. But listen, there is no spiritual gift of sitting and listening. That's not a spiritual gift. And you've been gifted to be part of this team. What are you doing? Find a place of service. Get involved. You say, well, I don't know where to start. Well, call me. Call Ernest. Call Mark. I, Mark, I know you've got no place for anybody, right? In fact, uh, I just... Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I've got a lot of places we could put people. I just saw something on Facebook today where Mark has a thing out there saying, hey, if you're interested in being involved in youth ministry, listen, go online and fill out this uh, uh, registration form, and he'll get in touch with you. Listen, if you want to do something for the Lord, there's a place, and there's a job. So get up, get along, and go to work. Silhouettes back in the 50s sang a song called Get a Job. Well, maybe we can have Alan to play that song Sunday. Yeah, we're going to have all kinds of interesting music here. Y'all come. So anyway, the gospel ministry has job openings. All you need to do is apply. And finally, verse 4, get happy. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Listen, if you will get up on your feet and stand fast. If you will get along with one another and you will get to work sharing the gospel in the gospel ministry, I promise you, you'll get happy. You don't get happy because you choose to try to, to pursue happiness. You get happiness by serving others. That's where happiness comes from. That's where joy comes from. Listen, um, there are a, a, a lot of people listening. Uh, well, you know, I know folks, my grandmother was one of them. TV be on all day long. You walk in, Fox News, CNN, whatever was that, you know, playing all day long. If you, are, if you have the TV running all day long, it's no wonder you're depressed. I mean, I mean, there's no good news on there. I got some good news right here, all right? Get involved in the good news, and you can be happy too. Let me ask you, are you happy if not, why not? Because if you'll get up and stand for the Lord, if you will get along with one another, and you'll go to work in the gospel ministry, you will be happy. Oh, it doesn't mean you're going to never have problems, but you'll rejoice. You'll have joy unspeakable and full of glory. So get up, get along, get to work, and get happy. All right, well, uh, let me just... Uh, uh, share with you a little bit of what's going on with Miss Esther real quickly. The um, Esther Charter, she's our, our lovely centenarian. She'll be 101 on July 2nd. And um, Esther is uh, out of her house today. We moved her into a motel so that they could fumigate uh, and get rid of the bed bugs. And so pray that that all goes successfully and we'll be re re returning her tomorrow to her home. But I want to just say this. There's an opportunity here. There's a job opening. 
If you want something to do for the Lord, humble yourself and serve somebody. And you have an opportunity to join Team Esther and get involved in, in what could be the greatest blessing of your life to get to know this dear lady and serve Christ as you serve her. If you're interested in helping us uh, with caring for Esther uh, and being a blessing to her, please reach out to me. Uh, Brett with one T. That's one T, Mark, right? I only have one T in my name. B-R-E-T at msbchurch.com. Let me know. Say, I'd like to be a part. What can I do to be a part of Team Esther? All right. Well, at this time, I'm going to invite Melissa Denton to join me on the platform, and we're going to be talking about Main Street Baptist Church's women's ministry, and we've got some exciting things going on there. So, Melissa, you... Um, you and I have met a couple times here recently, but why don't you tell us, tell the church, tell whoever's watching, the 7.8 billion people who are available to us through the internet, uh, a little bit about you, about your family, um, maybe how long you've been here at uh, Main Street, and just kind of let us know who you are. Well, Brett, I've been, I had to count, I was counting on my fingers when, um, when you were speaking, because I thought that might be a question that you would ask how long I had been at Main Street, and it's been 10 years, wow, which okay. is actually, I was thinking about that, that's the longest, we're not really church hoppers, but that's the longest tenure we've been at a church, so this has been my, this has been my main church home um, in my lifetime. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, um, the day I came here, the very first day my wife and I knew that day, I said, this is it. And there's just something special. And I'm not just saying that, folks. That's the truth. So if you're out there listening, you don't have a church, here's a lady telling you, hey, we got here and we stayed because it's a good church. And uh, we just love it here. So, so you've been here 10 years uh, and uh, you have a husband and how many children? I have, I have the husband and I have three children. Two are grown and married, and, and my daughter has had, a, has had a baby, and my son has had a baby, so I have two grandchildren, right. and my own baby just turned 16, and we own our own business. So I don't want to say I'm busy, but I think I've learned um, that, I, that I, I function just a little bit better, always having just a little bit too much maybe not too much I don't know but always having something and um, so I've been I've been balancing I've been balancing that and it and it works pretty good so I I still like to take part in the church because um, God is still first and so you then understand people and women in particular who have a busy lifestyle you understand where they're at I, I do I do understand that I, I must admit, I probably have a little bit of a hard time understanding the women who don't have a busy lifestyle, <laughs> okay. and that's a little bit of a struggle for me. All right. Um, but, but, yeah, I, 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 I love the church, and I like doing things in it, and my family just brings more joy to okay. me for it. Now, I just learned something recently about you. This is a very spiritual thing. Do you like baseball? At least you like your son playing baseball. I like my son. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and That's my where son, I was going. And my son likes baseball. Okay. So, therefore, you like baseball because he likes baseball. Right. Uh, and he had to miss his whole, uh, was his sophomore, junior year? Yes. They, they uh, just played a few tournaments before the district. UIL shut down the district and, you know, all the sports got closed in school. I think March 13th might have been our last hmm. Last, last game, and yeah. so, yeah, they, they were all shut down. He's, he was a sophomore, so, yeah. um, you know, he kind of commented that, it's, Mom, I'm just a sophomore, you know, so, I mean, it, well, it's, it's okay. It's a, it's a, so it's a year that's okay to lose. So he had a good attitude about it. I would have been bummed. I would have probably not had that good of an attitude about it. Yeah. <laughs> but Wade's a good kid. He's, uh, he, you've, you've done well there. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about women's ministry here. Why is... Why is women's ministry important? Why does a church, why would a church have a ministry just for women? What, what's important about that? You know, I thought it was interesting. You, you mentioned, you were talking about the, the passage, and I thought, yeah, that's, that's right. 
the, the women were helping. Paul cared about these women because they were helping him. And I've noticed that the women, you know, in a, even, even in a home, the women are like the heartbeat of the home. And even Jesus, you know, the, the women weren't necessarily his disciples that he was teaching, but it's told us they were ministering to him and they were serving him out of their own means. So the women play a really, really strong, have a really, really strong part to play in the church. Amen. So I, I believe it's important to keep them healthy spiritually. Very good. Now, in a recent meeting we had, uh, you said that you felt there was a lot of Bible illiteracy in churches today. What do you mean by that, and, uh, and what can we do to change that? Yeah, I might not have realized it till, you know, if you do a lot of Bible study on your own, and when I say Bible study, I mean the, the Bible. You know, it, one time I was reading uh, something in Ecclesiastes, and Solomon, what was it verse he had said? Um, there's the writing of many books is endless, mm -hmm. and excessive devotion to books is weary to the body. And I thought about that, and I thought, yeah, you know, we have milk and honey right there mm -hmm. just in the Bible. And I'm, I'm going to make, I want to I make that my focus. And as I did that, I learned so much, and I, I consider that as coming to God to mm -hmm. be my teacher at that time. And I met with a lady that we were talking about Bible study and what we should do, and, you know, she and I both were talking about the things that, you realize that so many people don't even realize there's a lot of there's a lot of stories in the Bible that are like we don't touch on frequently, and um, I thought about one. I, you know, I thought about a few of them. I thought about we talked about. She said, you know, a lot of people don't realize Abraham after Sarah died. You know, he married again, he wife, yeah. and he had more sons, and you know, Miriam. We hear about her putting Moses in the river. But she was with him in the wilderness, mm -hmm. and it said, uh, God said he spoke to her in dreams and visions. And she even became jealous of her brother Moses and was, you know, God punished her severely. There's just so many things, so many events and stories in the Bible that aren't, that we don't frequently touch upon. Mm -hmm. And, and they're wonderful, so I think a lot of people might not realize how much new there is. I mean, an entire lifetime you could study it and you're not going to know them all. There's so much. You're never going to run out of material. Very good. Neil, you know, uh, I think in that discussion we were talking about um, uh, the use of uh, Bible study curriculums, which can have their place and they can be wonderful, but we've gotten to a place in Christianity, I think, where we've got this curriculum, that curriculum, or you turn on a Christian radio and you listen to Christian music all day long, and so we kind of just... Christian out all day long, but we never open God's Word and hear directly from God. And I think I'm, I'm encouraged by the fact that this study that you've said, we're, we're going to bring our Bibles and a journal. Mm -hmm. And now if they want to bring other books, they're free to do that, right? Like if they want a commentary to study from or whatever. But your studies are basically going to be, you have a passage of Scripture, we're going to read it, we're going to study that. Is that right? Yeah, I know one of the things sometimes I would get disappointed at is, we, if, you know, if you do a Bible study and we bring our Bibles somewhere, it might be to a Sunday school class, it might be to a Bible study, and we open it, and that whole time we were there, we might have read two scriptures, mm -hmm. then we did a lot of talking, and I was like, man, I wanted to flip some pages. Mm -hmm. And so I thought about, you know, I wanted to touch a little bit on all the, uh, on, on the events, the past is very important, so the Old Testament is very important because it, it helps us reflect. We don't really want to look back, might turn into a pillar of salt, but it helps us reflect. <laughs> it helps us reflect, but the Old Testament also has some future prophecy in it, and I want to study the present. When I say the present, I mean from since Jesus came and how he told us to live right now while we're here before he comes back, and then we want to study the future, so I want to touch a, a little bit about that, and so, yes, when we read the Bible passages, and I say the journal, it's because when you read, there's, you know, I want people to write down things that they learned, things that they questioned, mm -hmm. and um, 
focus on everybody's at a different stage. Mm -hmm. So when somebody's giving the reading, they can just read it. And I'm just guessing it's going to be 20 minutes maybe total uh, for the week. Some are going to say, you know, I don't know enough about that. I'm going to look some stuff up. I'm going to look some background up, and they're going to make notes about that. And then others are going to begin to look at their study. They have a study Bible, and they're going to look at their study notes. Others are maybe going to look at the dictionary. So everybody's, going, everybody's at a different stage. But when we all come together, we all can learn from each other. I want to say it's a, going to be kind of participant-driven discussion. Good. So now this summer study is going to begin on Tuesday, June 30th. So that's two weeks from yesterday, correct? Yeah, yeah. And you have two times at 9.30 in the morning till 11. 9.30 and, to 11. And then uh -huh. 6.30 to 8 at night. Right. Um, where will that be located? Where are you going to hold the Bible studies? Right now, we are going to hold the Bible study here in the ministry center. You know, we've got COVID going on, and this is a big room wonderful air circulation. Mm -hmm. We can spread out. We obviously we won't need the whole room, but it will allow us to spread out. And I think we'll feel a lot more secure having that room and being able to space out. Now, if someone has uh, a lady has children, will she be able to bring her children? Will there be child care provided? There will not be child care. That's, um, you know, I debated doing the evening, and then I thought, but you know, if somebody does have child care, that's another option that might be available to them. I thought maybe so, Ernest might uh, volunteer just to watch the kids. Yeah, <laughs> not. <laughs> yeah, All right, so, so, so there will be no child care. So, not, not, uh, unfortunately, but that's just the way it is. And, right. Uh, but don't let that stop you from participating. Find a babysitter. Tell dad it's his turn, okay? Uh, and uh, come and be a part of that. And the format of the study, you know, I want to consider, for lack of a better word, I guess I wouldn't say it's fluid, or, and it's going to be adapting. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that, you know, COVID has taught us we, we kind of have to be ready to adapt in, you know, different ways. Yeah. So, no, there's not child care now. Will there be in a month or two months? Maybe, right. okay. you know. There's not a deadline. There's not an end date for the study. Uh, will it end? Maybe, maybe not. You know, we, we just want to have Bible study. If somebody's looking in the community and they're looking on websites looking for Bible study, we want there to be one. And it's, just, it's not starting in... Uh, this fall or this spring or you know it's 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 the next it's right. the next week that's available and we want that to be the want that to be there also wanted to make it where it's uh, we're not doing a seven week study and it's just on this topic so that somebody says well you know I don't I'm not some a lot of times ladies would say well maybe I can't come because I'm not I'm gonna miss three weeks so mm -hmm. I hate to just go and I'm already gonna miss three weeks but in this study, it won't matter. If you're here, you have a study to come to, okay. and, and you won't feel like you're missing anything. So there, it's, is that how you describe the, like the come and go? Yeah, time? yeah, and so, yeah. So they can come, and if they miss this week, it won't affect what you're studying next week. It won't affect what you're studying. I mean, there may be times where we, where we build up on it, because I'm not sure, right. like I said, it's fluid. But the goal is to have on the website if you think you're going to be able to come to the next Tuesday study that week prior it'll say hey our our reading passages for next week are this and you can come right now we have you know we have a sign up ready to go because we just for planning we don't know what to expect so it helps us but once we have that initial start the next times it's not going to be a matter of a sign up it's going to be more of a hey this is available come come and you just, you just have to show up. Okay, now is there a cost, Melissa, to this study? No, there's no cost. We are, there's a cost if you don't own a Bible and you need to buy one. Okay. But there's no, there is no cost. And if We're you have a lady to... that needs a Bible, let me know, I'll buy her a Bible. Gotcha. All right, so there is no cost, all right? Now, let me ask you this. Um, do you need to be a member of Main Street Baptist Church to participate in these studies? No, absolutely not. In the past, we, we, ad, we advertised in The View a lot, and we usually had a lot of ladies come that 
didn't belong to this church or belong to other churches, but they wanted to do the particular study we were having. No, we are, obviously, we, we, the church is the church. Okay. It's not churches. So. Now, what if there's a lady out there watching right now and she says, I don't go to any church. Can she come? Of course, okay. yes, yes. I knew the answer, but I wanted you to tell her that. <laughs> so, so it doesn't matter if you have been reading the Bible for the last 60 years or if you've never picked a Bible up a you're day just in your trying life. To, you're just learning how to do it, right. Very good. So um, bring your Bible, bring a journal, uh, and it says you're going to be studying narratives and events from the Old and the New Testament. Now, this first study... Will they be getting their assignment that day, or will that be online before, or how do they know the what? The first study, um, I decided just to, we're going to not have any preparation for the first study. Just come. We are going to have a passage, and we are going to read a couple chapters in a, and, and have some discussion questions and kind of show what we're, what we're doing with it so that you have an example of what to do at home by yourself. And then that, that Tuesday, of course, I'll have the reading for next week. And that's something that we'll try to post every week. And who will be your teachers during this uh, summer Bible study? Uh, well, right now, I'll be, I'll be in the morning session. I'm going to do the evening session, too. My son got his driver's license, so I have a, a lot of freedom a lot more now. Freedom so I can, I can do that. And Connie Heron is who I met with. And... She's actually, I need to give her credit because she texted me one day. It's, I think it's only been maybe two weeks. And she said, I feel like we need to do a Bible study. And she didn't really want know what we should do, but she knew we needed to do a Bible study. And she was right. And if she hadn't have done that poke, uh, I, I, I probably wouldn't have, okay. have initiated something. She helped. We talked about that yes. tonight. She helped. She, she said, I am willing to do whatever you want me to do. Right. I don't. <laughs> right. yeah. So now the, the studies themselves are going to be while you're here. Uh, they'll obviously be doing their own study at home, but it'll be a discussion, it's not, a dis not a lecture, right? Right. The focus is, like I said, participant driven discussion. We will, depending on our group numbers, how many come. Obviously, if we have six people here, we, we will just, you know, we don't need to break up into a group. I, I'm amazed at the sign up so far. I, I really am. Just the first, the first time the church Sweet. put something out, I was amazed at, at the sign up so far. And even there was a lady who, who didn't sign up, but she was like, I'm just so glad to see there's a study. Mm -hmm. I, it just, I just loved seeing that that was happening. And so I lost my train of thought. Oh, so the groups, but we will break up into groups. Okay. But once we get started, there's ladies who have signed up who have facilitated groups before. Okay. So depending on our number that day, like I said, I, I, I expect it to be very fluid. If we need to break up into three groups or four groups, we, we have, it's designed to have that small discussion. Mm -hmm. In the past, we've also always had assigned groups, and we're not, we're not going to do that this time. You know, if you had 30 ladies at a Bible study, and you're in a group 10, 10, 10, you get to know those 10 ladies. But I think it's real important that when you leave the Bible study, maybe you know all 30. And um, I, know my, I know personally, I felt like I was missing out on some people that have come to Bible studies but weren't in my group, and I never really got to know them. So I want it to, it's going to be more of a fluid dynamic where more of us get to know each other better. I pastored in Garland, Texas for several years, and my wife led out one of our neighbors to Christ her, uh, two doors down, and this lady was from Germany. Uh, and had literally never been inside a church building in her life. It was hard to believe. Uh, and, and so she was very reticent and very nervous about even going to a church building. And I remember uh, she started reading the Bible, and Kim would meet with her every morning, and they'd go through the Bible together. And she came running into the house one morning before I went off to work, and, and uh, she had read something over in the Old Testament uh, that... Uh, if it was put on a movie screen, it would be rated R or above. <laughs> and she comes in and she goes, she goes, 
Am I reading this right? Am I reading this right? Is that what really happened? And Kim said, yeah. And uh, she's like, that's in the Bible? It's, and so like you said, well, there are a lot of things in the Bible that people think, they just don't know it's there. Now, what would you say to uh, that lady that's never been to church or, or hasn't been in years and, uh, you know, f- feels like the, the, the roof's going to fall if she walks in or the, no one's going to, uh, she's going to be different. What would you say to that, that? That she's exposed, maybe, that she feels, yeah. you think maybe she feels vulnerable. Everybody's going to be able to tell that I don't know. I what, don't know the Bible and I'm going right. to be the odd duck. What would you say to her? I think this is probably a really good study for somebody just like that. Mm -hmm. Because if you can read, you know, you, you, the Lord is going to meet you wherever you're Mm -hmm. at. And there can be a lady who's never read the Bible before. And some that have, like you said, have studied it for 60 years. And when we're in the discussion group, I'm excited to hear from somebody who has never heard, read before. Because God's going to speak to her differently. And sometimes we got to go back and remember that, that fresh, mm-hmm. that fresh start. We forget. There's a lot of things we take for granted. So somebody who reads a passage for the first time and is telling the rest of us what she just learned I, I mean, I think that's exciting. Yes. Because God met with her personally. And, and the other ladies here, the lady that's read the Bible for 60 years, is going to be the first one to say, let me help you. I'm not, not judging her, not looking down on her, but saying, you know, we're in this together. We want to, you know, learn the Bible together. So there's a place at the table for everybody, no matter where you're at. Right. Very good. I'm excited. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, I know uh, a lot of other ladies are. I say other ladies. I'm not a lady, but a lot of other uh, people are, and, and I'm excited. About it. Would you like to say anything else about the Bible study or about women's ministry in general before we move to our prayer time? Um, you know, I thought when you, were, when you were talking up here, I thought, he looked at my paper because I <laughs> thought, because I, ty- I had wrote something down today that said the good news. I had I had gotten a lot of bad news today about some other things, and you know, and like you said, our news today is, yep. it, gosh, it's just so, so rough. And I thought, what better time to have a Bible study, Amen. because it, it is the good news. Amen. If you need some good news, there's really only one place to go. So I think that's really good. And I thought, you know, and God never changes. There's a lot of crazy things happening, and, and his, plan, his plan is still going as he planned. Amen. He still has control. So I really, I really feel like a lot of anxiety might be relieved. By, I, when I first started a Bible study, and I started here, I was having a lot of anxiety, and I didn't even know how to explain what I was having. Hmm. And I had told the doctor, I'm having a lot of anxiety. I'm worrying about things that I don't think I should worry about all the time. And she said, well, let me know if you need some medication. I said, I'll let you know. That next Tuesday, I started my first, so this would have been 10 years ago. I went to my first Bible study here, and my first group I was in, I called my daughter after the study was over, and I was like, my anxiety is gone. I just hadn't been around women. <laughs> you know, we were owning our business and I had yeah. kids and I never realized I needed women. Hmm. So women, women really do lift each other up. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, the purpose of our women's ministry is to equip women to know and to share the love of Christ. And we'd love for you to come and be a part of this summer Bible study. Again, that will start Two weeks from yesterday, Tuesday, June 30th, 9.30 a.m. till 11, and then in the evening, 6.30 to 8 p.m., and they can go online and sign up. There's a sign-up genius on our website. Right. So just go to the website, go to the the sign-up genius, and uh, sign up for uh, either the 9.30 or the 6.30 ladies Bible study starting June 30th. Melissa, thank you for joining us. I do want to say, I know some people, uh, it's typical for people to wait till the last minute to sign up. <laughs> if Tuesday morning comes or Monday night comes and you're, you're thinking, I, I didn't sign up, it's okay to come to one of the times. I just, I've asked, you know, I've 
and having to sign up. If you sign up by the 27th, it just helps me know yep. if I need to have some plants. I saw your wife signed up for the evening study, mm -hmm. so you know that helps me know. Hey, Kim, if I need, we have this many people sign up. I might need sure. your assistance with this. Sure. That just kind of helps me know to plan. But this is a study that you know you you come. It's you don't have to RSVP. It's just this first time. It just kind of helps me plan. Very good. Mark, did we get any questions about uh, women's ministry come through tonight? Uh, no, sir. Nothing that's come through. It sounds Mark, like do you have a question about women's ministry? Do I have a question about women's ministry? Can I attend the Bible study? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, it sounds like you guys uh, covered it really well. Melissa, so, great job. Your uh, wife is planning a retreat, I know, in October. She is. So uh, you and I need to have a guy's weekend or something uh, while they're gone. I believe that's October 16, 17, and 18, and you'll be getting more information about that as the time moves forward. But ladies, there's stuff going on. We got a ladies' Bible study starting in two weeks, and we have a, a retreat on the calendar in October. And Melissa, I'm excited about you leading and what, what God is going to do with this women's ministry. You want to stay here and pray with us, or are you going to go down? What do you, what, what, the, uh, I can pray with us. Y'all get, I have the... Um I have the prayer list that I, okay. I read over and, and All right. Well, Mark, do we have any uh, new requests that have come through? Uh, have a couple. Uh, one is uh, lifting up continued prayers for, uh, it says marriages in our congregation that are in trouble. There are a couple specifically um, that, that I personally know of. Uh, I don't know if that's the ones that are being referred to or not. Uh, but I know that there are some marriages that are, are in trouble in our, in our congregation for various reasons. Um, also, uh, Adeline is doing good. Uh, she is recovering really well. She's just really tired right now, so that's the latest update uh, from Barbara on, on Addie. Um, and then the, uh, just prayers for the direction of our ministries uh, that, that has come in. Uh, as, as the, the various areas are, are planning and discerning on what they could do and what, uh, what direction God wants them to go in, that, that uh, he'll be in the midst of it. All right. Um, um, we have a prayer request for a friend of our church uh, who's asked prayer for his boss who's having surgery. Uh, so please remember that. Uh, no names involved, but just pray that the surgery goes well. And... Um, uh, that uh, the added responsibilities that this person is going to have while his boss is out, uh, that that will also go smoothly. Uh, keep Bonnie Zant in your prayers. Um, she fell, and uh, is she still in rehab? No. She's out of rehab? Okay. So keep her in your prayers um, that she'll heal well. Uh, I know she's got a good attitude because she always does. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you'd think something might get her down, but it doesn't. Keep Dan Boone in your prayers um, also, um, and uh, his health, Joey Jenkins. Uh, some of these uh, you know well. Uh, keep praying for them uh, and their health. Uh, and again, I'll mention our dear Esther Charters. Uh, just pray that, she, uh, uh, that things go well with her in this overnight uh, at the motel that there won't be any anxiety and that she'll be back in her home tomorrow and uh, again uh, if you want a blessing get in touch with me and get involved in team Esther and and serving and helping this dear lady uh, any other prayer requests Ernest do you have anything uh, Wayne, Nero, uh, chief of police. Wayne Nero our chief of police okay keep him in prayer um, Mark, anything youth-wise or uh, otherwise? Youth-wise, just uh, prayers as we take this new direction uh, in the fall. Uh, it's shaping up to be something I'm, I am just so excited about. Uh, we're going to uh, take the gospel to in the, uh, into the kingdom. Uh, the, I do have one request. I was on the phone with one of our youth parents uh, earlier and they're going through a really tough time right now mm. uh, and uh, I have to lift it up anonymously but uh, just 
one particular youth youth parent is really struggling right now with a lot of things. Right. So, let's remember to pray for VBS. Uh, uh, it's going to be a virtual VBS this year, um, and uh, pray for Ellen as she leads that, and that things go well there. It's going to be different. Uh, but I believe it's going to be good, and I just pray that you'll uh, get involved, get in touch with Ellen, find out how you can help if you want to be a part of that. Um, we also um, got 48 more of these books in today. Pastor, we've given out 96 men's ministry books. Uh, and uh, so if you haven't gotten one, and there are some of you out there that said, hey, I need a book, and I told you we're out, well, we're, we're back in again. So you can stop by the office anytime. Uh, Monday through Friday during office hours, pick up a book, get involved in a small group. If you don't have a small group, contact me. I'll help you find one. And then uh, we even have another church that's going to be coming involved with us, and they're bringing their own small group uh, to our next First Friday Fellowship. So, uh, so guys, if you don't have a book, come by and get one. Um, let's pray. Do you have anything you'd like to add to the prayer list? All right, well, why don't you, will you open in prayer for us? And then uh, I'll close, and Mark, if you want to join in in the middle, please do so. My, you're not mic'd, are you, Ernest? Okay. All right. Listen. Our Father, we know that you know our needs, Amen. but you ask us to come to you and ask. And I just want to lift up the upcoming surgeries, and I want to pray for the surgeons. And I want to pray for peace for those who are, who are anxious about surgeries coming. I want to pray for those who have had their, had their surgeries and are recovering and that are, they're rehabilitating and some are still in pain. Hmm. I pray that you comfort them. Some have monetary concerns because of the medical issues. You know their needs. Lord, I pray for the marriages that uh, are struggling that have been mentioned. You know you know the healing that needs to take place. Yeah. Lord, I pray for those who have had unexpected family deaths. I pray that you ease their grief, comfort them. I pray for the caregivers that are taking care of those who have gone through life changes, and it's, a, it's such a change, and it's, it's hard, and it's hard for caregivers. I just pray that you enter their heart Help them to care like they would, like Jesus would care. I pray for our leadership and our community. Lift them up. We pray that it's probably very hard to not get discouraged. And we just pray that you just encourage them. Help those of us who are encouragers to encourage them. And may it be enough for them to, to do the job that you would have them do. I pray for the ministries in our church. I pray that the youth, the youth ministry can thrive. Vacation Bible School and our Amen. children can thrive. I pray for the upcoming Bible study. I pray for the men's ministry in our Amen. church that your men can be warriors for our families. I thank you that there's opportunities everywhere to serve, and I pray that you burden our hearts for the things that burden you. Our Father, as we continue in prayer tonight, we thank you for just allowing us the privilege of calling you our Father and to come before your throne with our petitions and our requests. And Lord, help us to never take for granted what it costs you to allow us into your presence, the blood that was shed uh, at the cross to pay for our sins, to open that way, that living, eternal uh, life, Lord, that was given to us through Jesus, your Son. We're so grateful that um, not only did he die for our sins and raised from the dead, but that the Holy Spirit uh, used the church and took the gospel to the regions beyond Jerusalem, and that eventually, Lord, it reached where we were. And I thank you personally, Lord, for when that gospel came to me, and you made uh, known yourself to me through your word and that I could become your child. And I thank you, Lord, for the privilege that is mine. I pray, Lord, for our church 
that we would always be about your business, that we would uh, get up and, and go to work with the good news of Jesus Christ and share that good news and spread it everywhere we go so that others too can hear and know uh, the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, we're talking earlier about such a, a time that, uh, uh, that just seems like all the news uh, that's put out is all uh, bad news, or seemingly so. And Lord, um, help us to be purveyors of good news. Help us, Lord, to publish the truth of your gospel everywhere we go. Lord, that, uh, that there might be hope in people's lives, that they might know your forgiveness, that they might know uh, the pardon of their sins and the, uh, the love and the comfort and the peace that comes in knowing Jesus as Savior. Lord, I pray for these that are on our list tonight that we've mentioned already. Uh, thank you that Adeline is doing well and that she continue to be strengthened, Lord. I pray for Wayne Nero, our uh, chief of police, Lord, that you bless him. Uh, Lord, I was just thinking today about uh, the, the tremendous amount of love a person has to have to put on that uniform, especially in this day and time. They have to just, they have to love what they're doing and they have to love the people that they're serving. And God, uh, they're getting a whole lot of grief for it. And I just pray, God, you'll bless him, help him to administer uh, and, 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 and watch over our uh, Georgetown uh, police department, Lord, and give him wisdom to direct them, I pray that you would provide um, not only protection, Lord, but encouragement and, and help to those that are there uh, daily, uh, Lord, uh, to, to serve and to protect. Father, I pray, God, that you would uh, be with our nation as we are in such turmoil. Uh, I pray that you would raise up leaders of uh, all over this country, all around this world, Lord, you'd raise up men and women who would speak truth and, and speak truth in love and uh, be peacemakers. And Lord, I just pray you'd heal the divisions that there are in existence in our country. I pray, God, that you will uh, lift up righteousness. Uh, you said in your word that, uh, uh, that a, a righteous nation would be blessed, Lord, uh, and that uh, uh, we, we want that. We want to be uh, a nation that upholds truth, Lord, and, and has compassion uh, and love for one another. Father, we ask your blessings on Bonnie Zant. Just pray that she continue to, to rehab well. And Lord, I know she's home now. Just pray that she'll be strengthened in her spirit, soul, and body. Lord, I pray for the direction of our church, and I pray for our pastor that you give him wisdom as he guides, as he leads, Lord, uh, through very uh, murky waters that you help him to navigate well and to be a leader to us, Lord, that uh, we might um, be a blessing to our neighbors, that we might be a blessing to Georgetown and beyond. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, listen, we appreciate every one of you for joining us here tonight. Melissa, thank you. I am excited about this Bible study. I know my wife is excited about it, and I know other ladies that I've heard from, they're all excited about it. And from what you're saying, we've had a good response of people signing up. We have. Thank you for letting me come and promote it. So I maybe am. some are encouraged who are sitting on the fence. Very good. Well, listen, get off the fence and get in. Be here June 30th, 9.30, 6.30, right? All right. God bless you. Good evening. We'll see you Sunday.